Hey guys, what's up? Ben here from thecoachwire.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a page transition in Webflow, like this one, for example. So to build this, we're going to use a little bit of custom code, but it's very, very easy. Just copy pasting class names and setting a timer. So if you don't know how to code, don't worry. It's very, very easy. So I'm going to show you how to build this using Webflow interactions, this little bit of custom code, and uh, I'm going to talk about limitations because there are limitations depending on the browser and how the user is interacting with your page. So it's uh, important to talk about it. Let's get started. Just to let you know before we start this tutorial, I made a demo site for this page transition. So if you want to visit the live preview or clone it in your Webflow dashboard, I put the links in the description. And I also put a little bit of custom code we're going to use in the description so you can easily copy paste it in your project. All right, let's jump into Webflow. OK, so to demonstrate this page transition, I built a very simple website with uh, two pages, so a home page on page two. So on the home page, I have a title, a button going to page two here, and uh, an overlay wrapper, which is containing five div blocks. If I go to the styles here, so I'll have a look. So each of those div blocks, they have a different background color. So this one, for example, is light blue. And then the um, overlay two is a little bit more dark and three even darker, four and five is the darkest with this dark blue. So basically those overlays, they cover, if I go to overlay wrapper here and show, they cover the whole page. And the overlay wrapper is position fixed, covering the whole page and all of them, they cover the whole page. So it's absolute and uh, covering the whole page. So if I go to my, uh, here, my preview, basically those, those overlays, there are those parts coming from the right and going to the left here. And uh, that's, that's the overlays. All right, let's go back to Webflow. I'm gonna hide this wrapper. So that's uh, our first home page. And the page two is pretty much uh, the same with uh, a title, a button, the overlay, overlay wrapper with the same five overlays. And this button is going back to the home page. So I can demonstrate going from home page to page two and from page two to back to the home page. All right, let's go back to the home page. So to animate this page transition, I'm using web for interactions on the button here. On the button, first, uh, let's have a look at the interactions. So there are two interactions. The first interaction is the page load, and the second interaction is the mouse click. So when, if I go to preview here, when I get on the page, I have blue screens and they move to the right. This is the page load interaction. So on, when my page finishes loading, I want this animation to happen. And this animation, I have those steps. So the first initial step is the overlay wrapper. So the wrapper containing all the um, overlays covering the full page. So I want it to show. And then one by one, I want overlay five, four, three, two, one to move to the right 100 VH in 1.1 seconds. So first is the overlay five, a little bit later, so seven milliseconds, uh, 70 milliseconds later, I want the overlay four to move to the right. Then it's overlay three, two, and one with the overlay wrapper. So that's why we get this kind of uh, like a wave. So it, it's not moving every, all overlays are not moving together. They are moving one by one to the right. That's how we do the, um, this first half of the page transition. And the second half is when I click on the button. So let me close this one. When I click on the button, I have a second interaction, mouse click. And this mouse click, it's uh, basically the opposite interaction. So I want the overlay wrapper and all the five overlays to move back to zero. So they are, when I get on the page, they are 
when I get on the page, they are in the middle. They move to the right. And when I, get to this but uh, when I click to this button, I want them to move back to the left on the page. And, back to, and when I get to page two, they move back to the right, back to the left, back to the right, back to the left, etc. So that's why I have two interactions. One is for moving those overlays to the right. And then the second interaction is to move back to original position. So as you can see here, over the one, two, three, four, and five, they have moved to original position. So that's, uh, that's it for the interactions. So basically, if now if I publish this website, without adding the custom code. Let's have a look at uh, what's going on. So I get to the page. I have my first transition, but then if I click the button to go to page two, I don't get the animation because the page is loading faster than the animation uh, going from the, from the right to original position. So it's not working. It's not a nice page transition. So to delay the page load, I'm going to use a small piece of code. And this small piece of code, I'm going to put it in the page settings. So if I go to project settings and uh, custom code here, in the footer code, I'm going to paste a little bit of code. This code, you can find it in the description of, of the video. I have it here on my computer. So I'm going to copy and paste it. So here I have my, it's a small script. So in this script, the only thing we care about is here, this area here, and this number here. So this area, I'm going to write every single class name of every single button I want to, uh, if I want them to activate the page transition, I have to put their class name here in between those two symbols. And then this number here is the timer. So if my pace transition is two, th two seconds, for example, I want to delay the page by at least two seconds, but I would say you put maybe like 300 or 400 milliseconds more than the page transition to be sure it, it looks great. So let's go back to the designer and uh, we're gonna grab the class names of our buttons and copy paste it in our custom code. So in this case, the button here, the class name is just a button. And if I go to page two, I use the same class name. So only one class name for the, um, for those two buttons. So it's going to be easy. I go to uh, my custom code, custom code here. Oops, yeah, I didn't save, sorry, I didn't save changes, so the code is gone. So I have to copy paste it again. All right. So in between those two here, I'm gonna write dot and the class name of the button. So in this case, button. If you have more than one class names, you, ha you add the first one, so dot first class name, and then comma space dot and the, and the second class name, for example, button two or uh, nav link or whatever you want. So it's very easy. Just have to add every single class names in between um, those two here in this area here. So in my case, I'm gonna delete this one because I don't need it. I just need the dot button because I have only one class name. For the timer here, at the moment, I have 1,000, but I think I need more. So I'm going to save changes. Go to the designer. And uh, I'm going to go in the interactions to check how long I need to delay the page before uh, it loads the second page. So if I go to the button here on mouse click, uh, the last one, so it takes one second and 38 to, to perform, to, I mean, for this interaction to finish. So I would say maybe 1,500 milliseconds is good or 1,600. Uh, 1, 
so we have time for the transition to happen before the second page loads. So I go to project settings, custom code, and the timer here. So instead of, instead of 1000, I'm going to write 1600. So we have a small margin. Save changes. All right. Go back to the designer. And uh, I'm going to publish this website. Go to the website. So the first interaction is good. I move my overlays to the right. And then when I click on the button, I have a nice overlay is moving to the left and then back to the right when I get to page two. So it's, it's exactly what I want. But there is limitation if, for example, if I go back to the home page. So I'm on the home page here. I go to page two. But here I'm on page two. Instead of clicking this button to go back to the home page, if I click the back button on my browser, then I don't get the first part of the transition. So you have to keep in mind, it's not a perfect, uh, it's not a perfect animation. If you use the buttons in the browser, there is limitations. And another limitation is when I use Safari. So if I go to Safari and uh, visit my website, so I have the first transition, I click my button, I have the second transition. So this is nice. But if I click the back button in Safari, what do I get? I get blue screen because it's the overlay which is on top of everything. And I, I need to refresh the page for this overlay to go to the right. So this is not really not a good user experience. We can solve this. So I'm going to show you how to do this. If I go back to the web flow, close here, I need to go to the button interaction mouse click here and I need to add one more step with the overlay wrapper here. I want my wrapper to hide when I finish this uh, interaction. So basically I'm going to add one more step here, hide, but delay. I want my, uh, the, the wrapper to hide way later. Um, I mean with a, with a delay comparing to this, uh, those, uh, those overlays moving. So the delay is going to be like three seconds. So after three seconds, I want my overlay wrapper to hide. Done. I'm going to publish again. Okay. Get to the new website. I'm going to put, copy, copy this one, go to Safari, open a new one, new tab. So I got my home page. I go to page two. Yeah. If I hit the back button here now, I get the home page and I don't get the blue screen. So that's how you solve the, the problem in Safari with uh, using those command button here back. Um, if you use the back button on Safari, you're going to have a problem if you don't add the, the next, uh, I mean, the one more step, this uh, step here. So that's how you solve the, um, this uh, animation problem. That's it for this tutorial. Don't forget to have a look in the description to copy the custom code you need to use for this page transition. And if you're looking for the links to the live preview or clone the project in your Webflow dashboard. If you have any question, comment below and I'll try to answer as soon as possible. And if you're looking for more Webflow components, interactions and tutorials, go visit nocodetribe.com and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get all the new videos. I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao, ciao.